four, three. Wait, I'm so lost. Happy Star Trek Tuesday, everybody. Uh, it is Tuesday evening, uh, or for some of you, it's Tuesday afternoon, I guess, or even Wednesday morning. But it is Star Trek Tuesday. It's time for the main viewer. We have so much to discuss. We have a big, gigantic, incredible Star Trek event happening on Sunday uh, that you need to look forward to. Um, we also have uh, some very sad news. You may have heard about Manny Koto passing away yesterday, or at least getting the news of his passing yesterday. Um, we also have some awards show nominations. Uh, not quite as big as the Lappy Awards for Star Trek, but still very big. Uh, so don't don't turn away just because it's not the, the Lappy Awards. It's still big awards. Critics' Choice Award, I believe. That's great. Uh, we've got some Strange New Worlds goodies. We've got some Picard nominations, Prodigy uh, news. There's even, if we've got time, we even have some Captain Cisco news. Uh Man, it is. There's just way too much happening. Uh, also, Twitter. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of uh, showrunners and such are jumping around and congratulating other showrunners for their nominees, nominations, which is always great to see. So everybody, please sit back, relax, and join us for the next bit of time we call 90 minutes here uh, on Earth. And enjoy this time talking about Manny Koto and others and uh, tell your loved ones. Look, the reason that this is going to be such a great show is because Melissa Longo is here. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> oh, and look at this shirt is awesome. <laughs> the core province majors. That is freaking gorgeous. Look at that. Everybody, you can get that at the Star Trek and Chill online store. You can find that link in the description box just below me. You click on that link just below the video and get yourself a Decor Province Major shirt or any of the others as well. Look, Muhammad Noor is here. He's a doctor and he's wearing a cool shirt too. I am. Hello. Always a pleasure to be on, on the main viewer. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Melissa Longo for uh, for designing this shirt. This is you know things like this are available from theintrovertedrepublic.com, which were walking art made by Melissa. Excellent shirts there, a lot great selection, and also at the Vegas convention, if you're going to be there, you can get some. Oh, good point, good point. Yeah. Uh, everybody at home, it's important when you are typing in theintrovertedrepublic.com, you have to pronounce the, the and not the, otherwise it doesn't work. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, everybody, another doctor, Dr. Anne-Marie Seagull is here, resident Hi. web crawler. Yeah, I've been crawling a lot for a few days. <laughs> and walking exclamation point. Yeah. Uh, all right, everybody. My name is Ryan T. Husk. I don't remember the last time I crawled, to be honest. Yeah, don't. Are you I don't know. getting into bed, maybe? You want to get to the middle nah. of the bed? Huh? No. Nah. Everybody in the live chat, let us know the last time you crawled, unless it's depressing. If it's depressing, then come on. Recently, we got enough... trying to show my niece how to crawl. <laughs> oh. So. Oh, you broke your ankle recently. Were you crawling around in your room from that? No, it's like hopping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody, uh, we're going to get into it. Please, uh, please be sure you are subscribed to this channel. It's free. It helps us out. Uh, and you like this video, please give this video a like. Uh, make sure that uh, you can click the share button and share it all over the place. If you're listening in, give it a five-star rating and a review. We'd really appreciate that. Tell all your pals, tell all your enemies, and let's get into the Star Trek news. First and foremost, everybody, check this out. This is very important. And it goes a little something like this. Uh, if you go to virtualtrekcon.com, you've got a countdown happening right here. Uh, thanks to Mr. Matt Boardman, VFX specialist. Uh, right now, people are saying VFX isn't web design. Hey, it's all the same to us. Wait, I don't know. Skills. 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so five days, 15 hours, 52 minutes, 40 seconds away from Virtual Trek Con presents the Star Trek Las Vegas Pre-Con Con. STLV 2023 Pre-Con Con. It's a full day of pre-convention shenanigans. Live videos, premieres, panels, interviews. You'll get all the information you want to know about Star Trek Las Vegas, which is coming up in just a few weeks. Uh, people will be telling us about their panels and their events to look forward to, special guests that are happening. It's just going to be a lot of fun. And if you are not able to go to Star Trek Las Vegas, this is a fun way for you to kind of get that fix. You, you see the people that you know and love. You have your fun. And you look around. Uh, and if you're on the fence, maybe this will help you to decide to go or not go. So check that out. That is going to be on this channel, on the Mission Log channel, and a bunch of other places, Seventh Rule channel. Um, uh, the Roddenberry Network channel, actually. There it is. Thank is you. Uh, so it'll be all over the place. It'll be all day long on Sunday, July 16th. So everybody check that out. On Friday on the, on the Star Trek and Chill, we will have the full schedule ready for you to check out. So check out. Star Trek and chill this Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll tell you the schedule of events. All right. That was fun. Really excited That's for cool. that. Yeah. Sorry, we're kind of low just... key right now because there is the, the bad news that we're going to open up with, which is that uh, Manny Koto passed away. Uh, we got the news yesterday. Here is from trekmovie.com now obviously a lot of media outlets covered this as well they should because he was such an important figure in star trek of our past um really really you know young 62 real bummer real sad day so um before we get into talking about it just first and foremost just for the informative portion of this trekmovie.com Title is Star Trek Enterprise Executive Producer Manny Koto has died. Uh, Manuel Manny Koto, known to Trek fans for his work on Star Trek Enterprise, has passed away. The Emmy-winning Emmy writer and producer was 62. Uh, the Hollywood trades are confirming that Manny Koto has passed away on Sunday at his home in Pasadena. According to Deadline, Kodo died of pancreatic cancer. His family says Kodo has been fighting the disease for 13 months and passed away, surrounded by loved ones. Manny Kodo joined Star Trek Enterprise for its third season as a writer and co-executive producer, rising to executive producer and showrunner for the fourth and final season. Right now, everybody's going, wait, the fourth season, wasn't that the best one? Exactly. He also continues. worked on the he worked on the third season as well. He was a writer for it. In mm -hmm. fact, some of the some of the greatest episodes from the third season, like Azadi Prime and Similitude and things were, were actually at least partially by him, if not heavily by him. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that third season was great too. I really yeah. loved the Zindi stuff, the Zindi arc. So uh it continues. He helped the show transition to more serialized storytelling, and his love for Star Trek was evident in many of the season four storylines tied into franchise lore. In a statement to trekmovie.com, Enterprise co-creator and executive Rick Berman offered his thoughts on Kodo's passing and praised the work he did for the series. Quote, if we had been given a fifth, sixth, and seventh season on Enterprise, Manny would have lifted it to levels beyond my imagination. A lovely and surprisingly talented writer and friend. How very sad. So kind of stop it there for a second. That's what we, you know, obviously he's done a lot of other things in his career and we can cover that as well. But first and foremost, he comes on in the third season, the Zindi arc. Some people don't like it. Uh, I thought it was I great. It. I, I it. thought it was a step forward in Star Trek storytelling. And uh, season four, a lot of people thought season four was where season one could have and should have and was expected to have been. Uh, 
Muhammad, I think you might be the biggest of the Enterprise fans out of all of us. What do you think? I might be tied with you. I mean, you're a big fan too. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I, I thought of, I, I thought some of the characters were underutilized, and I wish they had gotten more seasons so they could have done that. Yeah. So I mean, season three. The reason some people are not as fond of it. So both season three and season four had arcs associated with them. Season three was a full season wide arc. Season four had these uh, sort of two to three ep- uh, episode arcs in there. What people didn't love about season three was that it was dark and. It made sense to be something that was kind of dark because this was, you know, slightly post 9-11. It's a very 9-11-ish theme. So, I mean, it was going with, you know, the the thinking at the time. This is what people, you know, are are feeling. Now, some people were like, I'm already feeling enough of this in the real world. I don't want to feel it on, on, my, on my favorite franchise, too. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, it's, it's understandable. Both sides there are fair. But yeah, season four was great because then then we had these little snippets of like, let's talk about these augments, you know, from, from like basically the the con ancestors and then let's have another one with some backstory on the on the vulcans and and the the what was the name of the the guy whose katra was being passed on i forget um uh, wasn't it like archer got it and then he had to pass on to somebody else i can't remember yeah i can't remember the name i can't remember his name but anyway there was a lot there was a lot of mini plots when the Uh, live chat helps uh, us out everybody in the live chat let us know i want to say it's like saw something yeah (laughs) Likely starts with an S or a T. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it was great. It was very, very well done, very high quality. Obviously, the the exception that a lot of people feel with regard to season four was the it was the very last episode. But it was it was a Which little bit of a rush write. to yeah, exactly. It was a little bit of a rush of like, okay, wrap everything up for this entire series and connect it to the original series in one episode. Okay, <laughs> that's a high bar. <laughs> There's some like really amazing. Obviously, the Blu-ray uh, Enterprise DVDs, he gets interviewed, but also the Ready Room podcast um, on Trek FM. They had him on a few times, and he'll talk, he'd go on and talk for, like, a couple hours at a time about his process, and then they'd have other Enterprise writers come on and talk about the process, and um, famously, like, he had, he was a massive TOS fan and had, like, a list of storylines that he wanted to bring back from TOS. And he like decided to break season four up into those like mini arcs of two to three episodes. So he just like prioritized those. And then it sort of like became um, what like what he could have done if there had been more. And I know in the fandom, there was hope that if there is a Star Trek legacy or Star Trek anthology series, Terry Metallic, who also worked on Enterprise, could have like brought Manny Cotto back to continue some of that work. Shout out to Dave Gregory, Surak. Surak, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Surak. Good. Very good knowledge. Excellent. Uh, We have a poll in the live chat, everybody. The question is, how much would you have wanted to see a fifth season of Enterprise? The options are very, very much, or somewhat, or not really. There really isn't like a a pretty much. There (laughs) There isn't a good, there's an excellent or a fair in there, and a not really. Uh, so everybody make your voice heard. Um, One correction too from uh, Bill Erickson. The, 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 I think I said con ancestors. It's supposed to be con descendants, not con ancestors. This misspoke. Point. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think he yeah. actually wrote 14 of episodes from the time he wow. came on, starting with similitude. Yeah. And then obviously had a hand in all of them as a showrunner. Uh, very talented. I mean, those are, well, those are some I'm such a massive episodes. fan. That's like why yeah. I watched Enterprise. He was so good and brilliant. And yeah, I mean, just I could list. I wish there were so many more hours of him talking about his work on Enterprise. He was I love so Azadi Prime too. Yeah, he's just amazing. Yeah, you massive know, I wonder. Awesome. I wonder awesome. how well the show would have done. Like, you don't want to say if Manny, you know, started off as the showrunner in season one. But everybody says they did, it. But they did some great things in seasons one and two as well. Like, I really, there's a lot of great stuff. They introduced great characters. I loved them. They were amazing. They were just kind of different speeds, different writing styles from season to season. Uh, for me, season four was kind of what I expected season one to be. But, you know, I'm happy that we get, look. If we had gotten seven seasons of Enterprise, oh, wow. we would not have minded the first two seasons. Because, exactly. yeah. but it would the, the tragedy is that it ended right when we got a taste of something we really liked. If we got season five and season six and season seven, 
in the same style as season four, we would have been very happy with the way everything progressed. Like Deep Space Nine, for example, right? A lot of people think that it really kind of picked up and got like the Dominion going and all that stuff around seasons three and four, right? So we love seasons one and two, but imagine if it ended after four, we would have felt really ripped off, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Next Generation two, yeah. All of them actually, except two us. But uh, he was just like such a like much needed shot in the arm to the show from like showrunners initially who probably had some fatigue as they admit going into it after doing at that point like 13 or 14 years of tons of Star Trek every year. He was just so fresh and like loved Star Trek so much. It's amazing. So uh, John Ford in the live chat says Manny wrote and or co-wrote 14 episodes. I believe that confirms what you mentioned, Amory. <clears throat> also, mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's say hello to a few people in the live chat, starting first and foremost, of course, with ZZTH. Good to see you, ZZ. Uh, also, Valk, Linda Andereg, Chris Gavin, War Dogheim, that's Bill Erickson, in the blue skies of Montana. And by in the blue skies, I mean under them. <laughs> uh, Dave Gregory, hello. Chris Marshall, Melissa, uh, who talks about pancreatic cancer. Um Oh, that's terrible. Terrible news about that. Yeah, pancreatic cancer moves very quickly. It's real, real killer. Mm-hmm. It's real heartbreaker. Yeah. Shout out to um, uh, Armin's wife, Kitty, who who is a, is a big fundraiser for and who beat on the odds in an incredible yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we all know somebody. I had a very close friend who who died from that at 32 years old. Oof. I think it was real, you know, it's the great equalizer. Uh, hello, Chanel. Sorry, we're not trying to bump, bum everybody out here. Hello, Chanel. Uh, Mona, what's up? We see all of you. Welcome. Uh, all right, let's get back into this one Trek fan. Matt Boardman, of course. By the way, Matt Boardman, uh, we're just be showing off your in Ships of the Line calendar put on by Doug Drexler, which is maybe Whoa. the longest running Star Trek publication to date. So massive congratulations. Very good standing. point. Uh, yeah, so shout out to Matt Boardman and congratulations. That's freaking amazing. So everybody in uh, at the very end of this year, go buy your Ships of the Line calendar for all of your loved ones. And, uh, you know, that way you have a calendar for 2024. The I shared way. the information in the Virtual Trek Con Facebook group from Doug Drexler. Super exciting. Very cool. Uh, And also hello to May Borello, Robert Kaiser. We see you as well in the live chat. All right. So let's continue. Oh, it's a heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, This continues with a recent tweet from Manny Koto. Uh, It looks like it was just last year, September 26th of 2022. He quote tweets. Uh, Nicholas, somebody named Nicholas, talking about Enterprise, and he says, proud to have worked with such an incredible group of people, still the happiest time of my career. I love that. That's for us. Very sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, there he is right there. That's there gotta be him. Is. Yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah. There's Larry Nemechek. Yay. Yeah, he just stands out immediately. <laughs> you could see him right away. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of execs and people. Okay, very spiffy. Yeah. Uh, Larry Nemechek's really getting into character here. This is good. He is. <laughs> yeah, there was a like John Champion, but I don't think that's him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. That's a fun scene, though. Okay. So it continues. Star Trek cast and crew remember Koto. Condolences and memories from those who knew Kodo are appearing on social media. On Instagram, Brennan Braga, who also worked with Kodo on 24, talked about how much he learned from his friend and collaborator. Mm-hmm. And Brennan, Brennan Braga says on Instagram here, Manny Kodo passed away. I'm posting a cover from his Pulp Fiction magazine collection because we spent many hours in his beloved Pulp Room talking about science fiction stories. 
The issue pictured here was among his favorites because it contained the first printing of John W. Campbell's Who Goes There, which became a movie called The Thing. Manny loved reading genre fiction, and he was a master at writing it. I learned so much from Manny and consider him and consider myself one of the lucky people who got to know and work with him. I will miss his imagination and generosity, and most of all, his, his laugh. R.I.P. Manny Koto. Very nice as, sentiments. As we'll see in a sec, as this continues, like when you listen to the writing room, happened to do a lot of interviews with like Mike Sussman, Brandon Braga, Manny Koto, and like one thing that was so prevalent in all of them is and was how much everybody like respected him and loved working with him and like how much he added to the show and was a mentor to people. Uh, while we're reading this, everybody in the live chat, let us know your favorite season four episode of Enterprise. And for extra credit, let us know your favorite specifically written by Manny Cotto episode. So Mike Sussman uh, tweets, devastating news. If I ever wrote a take on my favorite year, it'd be about my experience working with Manny on season four of Enterprise. The guy bled red, blue, and command gold. Thoughts are with his family. And he has some pictures included. John Billingsley says, tweets, bummed as hell to hear that Manny Cotto passed away from pancreatic cancer. What a kind well-read, delightfully astringent man. I'd say flights of angels and etc. but if memory serves, he was an atheist. We had that in common. So just thank you, Minch. Uh, Mr. Michael Akuda also tweets, remembering writer-producer Manny Cotto, who brought the fun back to Enterprise's fourth season with his love for Star Trek. Manny had been battling pancreatic cancer and passed away at age 62. Included is a photo of Admiral Manny Cotto with Doug Drexler and me during the Enterprise finale in 2005. Look how happy they look. I love that picture so much. Yeah. Uh, Mark A. Altman, friend of the show, says, tweets out, heartbroken to hear about the death of Manny Cotto. He was a wonderful guy, talented showrunner, and his love for Star Trek knew no bounds. Not since Michael Pillar died of throat cancer has the Trek writing family lost such a legend. I think, I think died like shockingly at a younger age, I'd say. Yeah. Obviously, DC Fontana. Well, I'm sure we all have our yes. people that spring to mind when somebody says something Thanks. like that. But this was this was his feelings, uh, yeah. Mark A. Altman's. Anyway, that was a uh, kudos to Trek movie for covering that and hitting a lot of angles. They do they do that well, you know, oftentimes where they hit a story from a bunch of different angles. Any thoughts on that, Melissa Longo and the cool shirt? Yeah, no, I was thinking about my favorite season four episode that he wrote, and I have to say it's the Anar. And um, uh, and uh, fun trivia, or I don't know if it's, uh, I think it's fun trivia about Manny Koto, is that uh, he directed Aaron Eisenberg in a movie called Playroom. Really? In 1990, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Aaron in 1990 was wearing those puffy jackets and acid mm -hmm. wash jeans. He was so he, cool. He, the, <laughs> he still had his full blonde hair. <laughs> With like a wave. <laughs> yes, like a wave. But yeah, I read about that and I was like, wait, playroom? Aaron was in that. Oh my goodness. Wow. More Star Trek connections. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Looking at uh, everybody's messages here. Um, 
talking about the demise of enterprise. Everybody has their thoughts on what happened to enterprise. But if I remember correctly, at the time, enterprise seemed to be on the chopping block after two seasons, and then again after three seasons, and then again after four seasons. So I think it was just that it was almost and doomed. And was coming out, and that wasn't included in the ratings, like the way they looked at ratings, and UPN wasn't doing well. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Unfortunate but, circumstances. Yeah. If you can, make sure to check out his interviews on the Ready Room. Oh, they're just amazing and they, they make you love Enterprise even more. It's you know, it would be really cool. What we need mm-hmm. is a Star Trek Enterprise movie on Paramount Plus. Well, that's why I was saying we needed, like, if they did an anthology or some episode where they would do, like, a two episode arc, which is a movie. And I really had high hopes that they would get Manny Cotto back if there was ever something like that with an episode or two focused on Enterprise. Mm-hmm. That would have wondered that that would have been where they could have made uh trips not actually dying into Canada. Yes, yes. That's true. Yeah. Not too late. Ah, oh, there I mean, it is. The... Not too late. <laughs> it's not too late. Speaking of actually of uh, season five movies for Enterprise, uh, our good buddy Tommy Kraft, who's a VFX specialist, made a, a fan film, which oh. basically took place right after season four of Enterprise. Uh, it, it's about the Romulan War. Of course. Uh, yeah. And so it's really cool because for a lot of fans, it, uh, kind of took the place you know that was missing in our hearts about finding out what happened in season five of enterprise this covers that i was fortunate enough to act in it as a villain i was a uh, romulan admiral bad guy so if you ever <laughs> looked at me and said ryan yes. you kind of look like a romulan and a jerk i'd be like well then you're gonna love star trek horizon <laughs> you can check that out on youtube also our good buddy rico e anderson plays a vulcan as well so it's pretty fun and he made the okay. whole thing, practically the entire movie, just in his basement up in Michigan. He's he's a prodigy, that guy. Wow. Tommy Craft was amazing. He was like 23 wow. when he did it, too. Unbelievable. Wow. But that notwithstanding, I still want <laughs> an Enterprise movie on Paramount+. Plus. Yes. <laughs> totally. Yes. Totally. In fact, that is going to be our next poll. Do you want an <laughs> enter- enterprise movie? Are you gonna make it? Are you gonna make it uh, tough by having an either or instead of just a yes or no? I don't know. No, <laughs> keep it simple. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I really think though, like I would prefer if they did an anthology where they just do episodes. But- revisiting yeah. characters because that would just be like more of a character study instead yeah. of like feeling compelled to make it like actiony and whatever because i just wish mm-hmm. the characters and want to see what they're up to i love I that android need, i don't need a big like ooh, let's see like how the universe is in trouble and focus on that yeah. but that's just me get out of my country <laughs> that's just- un-american I, I miss idea. those kind of <laughs> movies where they're more character and less, you know, flash in the pan and, you know. But see, uh, nowadays we're not living in the uh, in the era of either or. We can have both. We can have a right. movie and we can have an anthology series. You know, there's no reason that we can only have one. Uh, I hope <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'll be sad. <laughs> I mean, I do think as they keep adding care, like categories about TV, that's like, streaming movies i feel like that will be a big like impetus for paramount to add star more and more star trek streaming movies because there's less competition and it's still prestigious yeah well and i do think that your your idea of an anthology is a good idea too well, and I, it's also uh, Alex Kurtz. I saw it from alex Kurtzman. <laughs> yeah i feel like that one's actually kind of in the works and has a a decent chance of happening oh. And it would yeah. be criminal 
if they don't involve some enterprise people in this. Because, I mean, come on, guys. Criminal. Enterprise existed. I Paramount know. Plus, stop acting as if as if enterprise didn't exist. Come on. Well, it's still on their streaming site, so... <laughs> Stop throwing, yeah, shots at, stop throwing shots at Prodigy, Anne-Marie. <laughs> I'm not at all. I love Prodigy. All right. So let's continue uh, a bit more. Also, just very quickly, um, possibly the first to do talk about this was Deadline yesterday. Deadline is usually pretty quick with the Hollywood news. Uh, there's, it's entitled Manny Cotto dies Emmy winning 24 executive producer mm -hmm. who created AI drama next and worked on Star Trek enterprise and American horror story and Dexter was 62. Check out that article. We're not going to go through the whole thing, but this one is a lot more extensive. It's less Star Trek centric. Uh, so if you want to learn more about what made him such a great and legendary writer beyond just those two seasons of Star Trek Enterprise, check out Deadline.com. Oh, yeah, I forgot I watched article. Dexter because I thought he was involved. Like, so amazing. Yeah. So anyway... Um, Everybody at home, make sure you are voting in that poll. Uh, do you want an Enterprise movie? So far, Anne-Marie, 0% of the people agree with you. No, I do, because you didn't give an option for episodes instead. But yeah. So I said, right. I guess. Uh, I was going to say, like, the walking exclamation point, of course, you said, hell yes. Yeah. Um, so moving on to, uh, here's a, here's an item here for everybody to enjoy. It is from twitter.com, which is a website, a social media website. Oh, that was gone. Uh, just <laughs> you're just looking into the future again, Muhammad. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is from Aaron J. Waltke, a writer producer of Star Trek Prodigy. At Good Aaron, he says, look what just arrived in the McMail. Thanks to <laughs> At The Academy for honoring Star Trek Prodigy with a nomination for Outstanding Animated Series. I'm so proud wow. to be a part of the passionate crew that brought this show to life. And I remain confident we will find a new home. I hope so. Love because it. right now, like, there need to be networks and stuff tweeting out about how amazing this is. Not just mm -hmm. him. Like, what an accomplishment. Yeah, so many nominations, so many awards. Like, it's great. And it deserves and every one of them. straight up outstanding animated series for children yeah. family Emmys. It's not even yeah. like, yeah. I mean, I know they had won, I think, like, that's, uh, I don't know, art production or something last year, which is amazing, too. But, like, to be in this main category and mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. they have a chance when I looked at competitors. Oh, Everybody and tomorrow, at home, the other nominations come out. This is also <laughs> important. Go to at Good Aaron on Twitter and uh, hit this little heart button. Yeah. And hit this little retweet button. Yeah. Like yep. so. Uh, he also meant to tag the Emmys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you could even hashtag Save Prodigy in there. Save Star Trek Prodigy. Prodigy in there. Um, Very good advice. And then if you want to mm -hmm. just briefly pull up the other article, that is another way that you can help Prodigy uh, pre-ordering the season two or yeah. the second half of season one's Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Before we wow, do that, out. check out one more tweet from our good buddy, Good Aaron, who uh, tweets out a nice little scene from Star Trek Prodigy here, actually. Maybe you can hear it. It's from the Prodigy Writers Room. Yeah. Yeah, let me do this. There we go. Oh, yeah, from the Prodigy Writers Room. You're right. Maybe. I've already heard this. Not this message. It's I don't know if you guys can hear that. But, yeah. <laughs> but everybody go check that out. Um, you know, it's just a fun scene. And it reminds you how amazing prodigy is and of course we've got Janeway we've got Chakotay what more could you want we want Neelix come on grow up <laughs> uh, 
just kidding. We all want more Neelix. Neelix and chill. Um, okay. <laughs> Next, we've got this article here. Uh, we won't read the whole thing, but it is from, here's a new one, Muhammad. Tell me if you've even heard of this one. This, this website is called tor.com. Oh, that's mm. crazy. But it's, yeah, it's kind yeah. of just, it's really long. Yeah, actually, I shared this article. I definitely heard of it. CFF. This was new to yeah. me. What does TOR stand for? Do we know? It's just rot backwards. It's, just kidding. I don't know. It's massive, <laughs> though. It has like 200,000 followers. Wow. Good for them. Uh, oh my we'll just... God, I love Jim. He's like my one of my best friends. That's awesome. I was like, the... hey, you should write about Prodigy. Does he know who you are, though? Yeah, we go out all the time. <laughs> So uh, this is entitled Star Trek Prodigy is the bold and beautiful little sibling of the Star Trek universe and needs to be allowed to continue. Yes. So this guy is yes. leading the charge with us. Muhammad, do you want to read this? I would be honored to read it. For? Thank sure. you. Last week, Paramount Plus announced that it was canceling its animated Star Trek show, Star Trek Prodigy. The decision shocked fans. The show had been renewed for a second season since its debut in 2021 and is currently in post-production. Also, Paramount Plus didn't just cancel Prodigy. It announced the show would be removed from the Paramount Plus platform. It's gone, it's gone already now, making it the only Star Trek show that has ever been made that is not currently available on the streaming platform. Stepping back, the streaming business is in a crazy way right now. Many of the streamers have turned to this tactic of removing material so as to avoid paying licensing fees for those shows. The fact that Paramount Plus has joined their ranks is sad, but no surprise. The streamer also announced that it's removing three other recent series. But Star Trek Prodigy isn't just any show. It is Star Trek's first show aimed specifically at children. I'll, I'll edit that and say it should be families, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and while the one phrase logline that got tossed around when the show began, kids steal a starship, Seems like your standard childhood tale of wish fulfillment. In reality, the show the creators, Kevin and Dan Hageman, set out to make was anything but a typical kid's show. Star Trek Prodigy told the story of a group of children who had been enslaved to a ruthless tyrant and were trapped working in a mining colony. They stumbled onto the abandoned Federation starship, the USS Protostar, during a rock collapse, and they used it to make their escape. While the season-long story that ensues certainly involved lots of fun adventures that play on the classic Star Trek ideas, we get a Kobayashi Maru test, a time paradox, a Borg encounter, and trapped in the holodeck episode, the overarching story is actually quite poignant. Upon learning of the Federation from the ship's onboard hologram, the children are so inspired by its ideals, they decide they want to join. Later, when they discover their ship has been booby-trapped to destroy the entire Federation by the being who had enslaved them, they sacrifice pretty much everything, including the dreams of joining the Federation that had sustained them for so long in order to try and save it from disaster. Ah, what a great show. Yeah, that is amazing. I see Aaron Wolfe in the live chat. Oh, good timing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, he's, he's like he's Batman. Got a radar. He, he goes, he's like, somebody's talking about prodigy. <laughs> and then he like, or like Toucan Sam, like, like he floats out, like following his nose to where they're talking about oh, prodigy. I, I love actually it. like started the protostar beam, like thing in the sky to see if he saw it. <laughs> you know what I was thinking we should do? We should have for Star Trek Las Vegas this year, the theme should be. Uh, the starship has landed, you know, where we all like, we all like tweet out or post when we've where arrived at Star landing? Trek Las Vegas. Oh, that's a good idea. The that proto star has Where's landed. Where's the proto star landing? That's what we want we to know. Need to, we need to know. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Good question, Dr. Amory. He said, Aaron Walkie says, I'm like Beetlejuice. If you say my name enough times on a YouTube channel, <laughs> I will appear. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen okay. Beetlejuice. What? I've never seen Beetlejuice. So surprised. I know wow. it's upsetting, but well, yeah, it's just a surprise. But I've heard of it, and I understand the. Con I feel like I watched the first fifteen minutes. Weren't they like mm. 
moving into like a house or looking at a house and there was like a hole in the floor anyway whatever yeah. um, the is so good i mean like it, it was such a surprise to it because i think people assume like that article said this is just gonna be a kid's show so again the kind of thing you put your kids in front of and you go leave the room no that is not what Prodigy was at all. It was like a really engaging show with engaging plots. It had every aspect of good Star Trek in it that kids could, you know, com- comprehend, but also adults would really enjoy too. So, well, yeah. taking that a, a bit further, what I really liked about Prodigy was that Paramount Plus and the powers that be embraced it as not just part of the Star Trek universe, but continuing the nice. Star Trek universe with characters nice. like yeah. Janeway and Chakotay and storylines that we've gotten through Voyager and through others. There's a mm-hmm. Tellarite. We're getting all this stuff. So it wasn't just like, let's, let's do a kid's show. Let's do a family show. Let's do whatever. It was Prodigy is part of the tapestry of the Star Trek Absolutely. universe. If you are not watching Prodigy, you are missing out on, you know, the, the growth of the Star Trek story and the Star Trek universe. It's not just like a side piece. It's not a, you know, mess, uh, an episode. It's not a bottle episode or a a bottle series. So I was hanging out with Jim who wrote this article, which is amazing. And I was like, what? You're not watching Star Trek Prodigy? You love Star Trek. Like you have to watch this show. It's not just for kids. And like, clearly he got so into it. This article is like a love letter to anybody who's interested in Prodigy and Tor.com is, such a great output and he's like of course they picked it up like it's such mm-hmm. a great way it needs a home and everybody loves it and we also have some exclusive news in the live chat that Aaron that's Wolfram what I was, was waiting to toss that in there yeah <laughs> what's yeah, the main name? viewer it's a main viewer exclusive so we knew that Dan and Kevin Hageman and Bonnie Gordon from Prodigy were all going to be at Star Trek Las Vegas right Aaron Walkie tell me what we're waiting the- for Aaron Walkie will be at Star Trek Las Vegas too. Oh, Our prayers have been answered. It's, uh, I was waiting for that. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. We are we are protesting. We're boycotting <laughs> Star Trek Las Vegas. If they're going to have a prodigy panel on any kind of prodigy anything, they got to have Aaron Waltke. That is so cool. So everybody bring cotton candy because Aaron Waltke is a huge cotton candy lover. Right now he's going like, no, don't bring cotton oh my candy. God, my I don't eat that decide crap. what t-shirts to wear is the question. <laughs> all of like, them. You know him. He oh. wears all of his shirts <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> at the same time. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's great love. Everybody go check out tour.com in that article. It's an extensive article. Uh, good job, Anne-Marie, getting the writer into yeah, Prodigy. He because, you know, right when Muhammad was reading that, I kind of caught myself thinking, you know, sometimes I'm like a grumpy gussy. No, no, it's true. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'll be like, journalists don't need to be activists. Just give me information. I'll make up my own mind. I don't need you to tell me. But then when I was reading that, I was like, nah, you go ahead and be an activist, bro. <laughs> you go, go support Prodigy. I'm down with the cause, man. Keep up the good work. Well, it's sometimes you just need a good summary article to, because like people might not know what Prodigy is and it tells you like where, what the state of the situation is and how good it is. Mm. You mentioned earlier. That and that obviously is John Orgeal is my other favorite writer. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned earlier, it's a continuation from other series too. I love the the meme that went around several times where it had like, the, it has this Trojan horse and says Prodigy on it, but then inside it says something like Voyager continuation. <laughs> Oh, Absolutely. Aaron, I love that meme. Yeah, Aaron Walkie says, uh, haha, ironically, I really do not like cotton candy. I knew it. As I was saying that, I could just I could just sense him. See, that's my special. His special power is when you mention him on a show, he shows up. My special power is I know what people hate. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so that's, as I was saying that, I was like, I bet you he doesn't even want that crap shoved in his face. He's like, get that away from me. Um, but to finish up here, uh, we do have one more article on Prodigy. It's trekmovie.com article. And this is very important to everybody. Yeah. It's entitled Star Trek Prodigy Season 1, Volume 2, available for pre-order on Blu-ray and DVD. Finally. So uh, it states, just two weeks after Star Trek Prodigy was removed from Paramount+, Plus, we have at least some good news for fans 
who want to catch up on season one. Pre-orders for the second volume of the first season are showing up online, and we have an update on all the latest for Prodigy and its future. Prodigy Season 1, Volume 2. The first volume of Prodigy Season 1 with the first 10 episodes was released on, in January on Blu-ray and DVD. Today, Amazon listed the release for Volume 2 with Episodes 11 through 20, which arrives on September 26th. The listing currently does not have details on the releases beyond saying that they will include two discs each. You can pre-order the DVD for $17.99 and the Blu-ray for $21.99. Uh, so that's really cool for those of us that already got the first one, but never got the second one. I've purchased two of the first one. Really? And, Backups. and it's on a major delay. It's not even delivering until the end of July. And I ordered... And I was like, what the heck? And I realized that's great news. That means people are buying the shit out of it. And yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Yes. Good signs for when Netflix takes mm -hmm. it on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a feeling that Prodigy is going to be back on Paramount Plus. Mm -hmm. Not this year <laughs> or maybe next year. <laughs> but I have a feeling that because they've already vacillated between having movies on and then not and then having movie this show on and then not uh so hopefully this is just a temporary thing but either way we know that prodigy is not so temporary that that show will continue on i have high confidence yes. in that um anyway so that's cool everybody go to amazon.com order the second half of prodigy season one even though it's not going to go out until september 26th numbers are very important if there's one lesson we keep learning over and over and over again uh executives powers that be big companies they only care about one thing and that's numbers so show them numbers that they want to see and they will be fighting over prodigy yeah that run okay <laughs> well done Thanks. <laughs> uh, all right. So please go do that. You can pre-order the DVD for $17.99, Blu-ray for $21.99. Just do it and figure out what you're going to do with it later. Get three of them and give them out for gifts. If you're really into... Oh, okay. I was just going to say, I've ordered it twi the first one twice, neither time for me, as both times as gifts. So they make great gifts. Just do it. If you're really into streaming too. I, I just I just bought the first half season on Amazon. Just bought the episodes. You know? Oh, you can do that still. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, at least I did like about That's a week really ago. Really good to know. I yeah, that was very yeah. smart. That's a yeah. very good point. Yeah, because yeah. I don't even have a Blu-ray or DVD. That's what I was thinking. Do I, I have exactly. one old Xbox? That's why I just really I buy them old. as gifts for other I never people. But you're right. Yeah. You're right. Just buy buy the streaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do that. Download it. Okay. That's the gifts I want. So uh, continuing on with what we were discussing earlier with Prodigy's nomination. Um, and, oh. You want to go to the other Aaron, nomination? did you, Aaron, in the live chat, did you know that we were live because you saw me retweeting you in real time? We actually retweeted you from Virtual yeah. TrekCon <laughs> live. Maybe that's how he knew. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so next very quickly, here is a tweet from Trek Central. And they say, breaking, um, you know Picard what? HCA Award noms. Congratulations to Star Trek Picard, which has been nominated for a fantastic seven uh, Hollywood Critics Association Awards for season oh. three. They include best streaming data series plus acting nods for Sir Patrick Stewart. <laughs> streaming Jerry drama Ryan. series, not data series. <laughs> oh, so I, saw <laughs> ben, I saw this right below it. And so I just yeah, exactly. said, <laughs> best streaming drama series. Thank you. Uh, no Patrick Stewart, Jerry <laughs> Ryan, Brent Spiner, Michelle Forbes even. That's cool. Wow, that's great. And two nods for showrunner Terry Metalis for writing and direction. Well-deserved there. Nice. Star Trek Lower Decks also picked up a nomination for Best Animated Streaming Ser Series. Plus, Jack Quaid received a Best oh. Actor nod. Congrats. So, I think Trek Movie already did an article where they're looking at all of the competitors and, like, analyzing this data. Right. Which is amazing. So, that was the door 
Yes. And here's what's inside the door. Which I'm like, man, how do they do this so fast? Yeah. They're pretty good. Uh, So trekmovie.com along these lines, they have something in an article entitled Star Trek Picard and Lower Decks nominated for eight Hollywood Critics Association Awards. Uh, Not as cool as the uh, the award that... uh, well, here Prodigy tomorrow. got nominated for, but yes. check it out. Muhammad, would you like to read this one for sure. us? Sure. The third seasons of Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Lower Decks got a big boost today with the announcement of eight nominations from the Hollywood Critics Association, seven of which are for Picard. This recognition could be a good sign that the Trek shows may all also be recognized by the Television Academy, with Emmy nominations set to be announced on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Hang on a second. Ooh. Tomorrow morning. No, they should have had one more nomination because they had the eight nominations. If they had nine, they could that have said is. seven oh, of seven nine, nine of nine. which are for Picard. <laughs> oh, and then the great. internet would have exploded. That would have been amazing. <laughs> anyway, Hollywood critics recognize Picard. Today, the Hollywood Critics Association announced nominees for their third annual HCA TV Awards. The HCA breaks up their categories into cable and broadcast, sorry, cable and broadcast and streaming with Picard dominating across the streaming drama categories with a total of seven nominations. This includes a nomination for Best Streaming Drama Series, the same category Strange New Worlds was nominated for in 2022. Ah. This year, Picard is going up against 1923, Andor, Bad Sisters, Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton Story, The Boys, The Crown, The Diplomat, the Handmaid's Tale and The Mandalorian. Whew, that's a that's an elite group to be in the middle of. That is. I wonder who yeah. Jack Wade is rooting for there because there's the boys. That's true. But you can't be anti Trek, bro. We'll be pissed. <laughs> but this is a lot of people are loving Andor too. Well, there's a, yeah, there's the first a, on it. a mm. lot of strong contenders there. Totally. Uh, let's oh, let's go down here. Wait, was there more for there Star there. Trek? Yeah. No, not no Star Trek. Well, oh yeah, Lower Decks. Patrick Stewart. Mm-hmm. Also Actually, the first yeah. <laughs> Picard stars Sir Patrick Stewart Super was nominated for Best Actor in a Streaming Drama Series, and the competition includes Lower Deck star Jack Quaid, nominated for The Boys. So there's a head-to-head you were talking about. Mm-hmm. He's also facing off with Anthony Starr from The Boys, Diego Luna from Andor, Dominic West from The Crown, Harrison Ford from 1923. Mm-hmm. Wow. Logan Lerman from Hunters and Penn Badgley from You. Wow, you know, Harrison Ford is in 19. Yeah, he is in 1923, and he's fabulous in it. Oh, that's cool. Good for him. Yeah. Uh, and then Brent, what? Brent Spiner was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in, in a Streaming Drama Series, hey. and Jerry Ryan was nominated for Best Supporting Actress in a Streaming Drama Series. Spiner's competition is Bradley Whitford from The Handmaid's Tale, who actually does a great job, too. Oh, God. Yeah. Chase Crawford from The Boys. Edie Gathegi from For All Mankind. <laughs> Ismael <laughs> Cruz Cordova from The Lord of the Rings. Jensen Ackles from The Boys. Jonathan Price from The Crown. Max Minghella from The Handmaid's Tale. Rufus Sewell from The Diplomat. And Stellan Skarsgård from Andor. Uh, I, wonder the, I wonder if the Lord of the Rings so one. Is many. that supposed to be Lord of the Rings or is that supposed to be the, the what's the prequel thing called? Oh, the Ring of Power. Yeah, I wonder if it's supposed to be Ring of Power. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Yeah, and there was no, there's no TV show called oh, Lord of the Rings, man. right? Yeah. So it, it's got to yeah. be that, yeah. Yeah. But gosh, more so talented, all of those people. Oh, totally. mm. Jerry Ryan is nominated uh, along with Ann Dowd from The Handmaid's Tale. That's a tough one, too. Anne-Marie Duff from Bad Sisters. Elizabeth Debicki from The Crown. Emily Swallow from The Mandalorian. Eve Hewson from Bad Sisters. Genevieve O'Reilly from Andor. Leslie Manville from The Crown. Sarah Desjardins from The Night Agent. And Yvonne Stra... Oh, Yvonne Strahovski from The Handmaid's Tale. Woo! That's a tough one. <laughs> You're good at reading last mm-hmm. names, Mom. There's a few of those that would have stumbled me, and you fly right through them like a chip. Yeah, I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're saying them with conviction, which makes me believe it. Yvonne you know? <laughs> Strahovski and Hammond's Tale. Ooh, she is really, really, really good in that show. Yeah, so uh, that's that's stiff competition. But Jerry Ryan's also awesome, so it's fair either way, you know? Yeah. Emily Swallow. Then we have Michelle uh, oh. Forbes. 
Michelle Forbes is nominated for a Best Guest Actress in a Drama Series for the Picard episode, Imposters. She's going Amazing. up against Aya Cash from The Boys, Prodigy Voice Actress Ella Purnell from Yellow Jackets, Woo-hoo! Gwendolyn Christie from The Sandman, Lizzo Ooh. from The Mandalorian, McKenna Grace from The Handmaid's Tale, Melanie Linsky from The Last of Us, a great show, Regina Taylor from CSI Vegas, Tamara Clatterbuck from Will Trent, and Vanessa Kirby from The Crown. It's interesting we have a lot of Trek people who are in other roles, too. Yeah, Yeah. that's awesome. And was Gwendolyn Krisky in... in, uh... Yes. Yeah, Um, what was... The... um... (laughs) Game of Thrones. Thrones, I'm I'm so into Trek mode right now that I can't think of... Right, the, the swords, and, and I'm like, yes, and I loved her character. And in, in, uh, I bet Anne Marie hates Tarks. Game of Thrones, yeah. Brianna, oh, I, like, yeah. I like Game of Thrones, okay, good, better be. And Picard season three showrunner Terry Metalis picked nominations for best writing, and they're supposed to be picked up nominations for best writing in a streaming drama series, and for a best directing in a streaming d- drama series. Both for the season finale, The Last Generation. Oh, nice. Yeah. For the writing award, Metallus is facing Taylor Sheridan from 1923, Tony Gilroy from Andor, Carla Banks Waddles and Daniela Gage from Bel Air, Logan Ritchie and David Reed from The Boys, and Peter Morgan from The Crown. And for directing, Metallus faces Ben Richardson from 1923, Benjamin Karen from Andor, Nelson Cragg, The Boys, Alex Craves, The Diplomat, and Lee Isaac Chung from The Mandalorian. And Lower Decks nominated again. Woohoo! Love oh, the anime right. shows getting some love. For the second year in a row, Star Trek Lower Decks was nominated for the best streaming animated series or TV movie for its third season. The anime mm-hmm. Trek is going up against Attack on Titan, My Hero Academia, Central Park, Animaniacs, and Harley Quinn. Oh my God, it totally Lower, Lower Decks, Lower Decks. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is the last bit's important, too. Sure. Due to the ongoing WGA strike and the sag after strike looming, winners of the 2023 HCA TV Awards will not be presented on the previously announced dates of August 12th and August 13th. The presentation of the HCA TV Award winners is TBD. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's definitely going to be some news soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. On Thursday morning, I think. It's like midnight. Uh, so before we move on to any of that, just want to point out uh, that there was a little bit of love being tossed around on Twitter. Check this out. I love that. Our good friend, Chris Fisher, who is a writer and, and executive producer of Strange yeah, New Worlds. Sorry, thank you, director and executive producer of Strange New Worlds. He's a little tough to find. It's not obvious. At Widget Factory Co. So go follow him at Widget Factory Co. If you just try to type in Chris Fisher, good luck. Director Um, of the uh, Laffy Award winning best episode of 2022. Absolutely. Yeah. And a couple episodes in this second season as well. Uh, We love Chris Fisher. He's amazing. He uh, quote tweets the Hollywood Critics Awards. And he says, very proud of our two Trek family nominations at Terry Mm Metalis. And at Dave Reed. So I have to tell you, my my Twitter alerts went out. I have Twitter alerts set for like every Star Trek writer and showrunner and director. Yes. So my phone just like the battery ended in like 20 minutes of everybody congratulating each other. But the my favorite one I saw was the Hageman brothers telling Mike McMahon to beam up an HCA award, which was adorable. (laughs) Uh, Did somebody say Mike McMahon? Yeah. Uh, well, here he is, quote, tweeting the HCA yeah. awards saying, go lower decks, get them noms. And right mm-hmm. now people are saying that makes me hungry. I feel like they have a oh, chance. Get them noms. I think we know somebody who replied to that I one, too. I do think they have a chance. Pablo yeah, Hidalgo? Uh, I don't know what I was about. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Bill Walkoff, Flying Lobster, also of... Uh, Strange New Worlds, right? Uh, great friend of the he show. And he's also a captain, a uh, writer strike captain as well. So he's doing a lot of great work for the writers and for the Star Trek world. He says, congrats to you and your team, Mike. 
Let's go ahead and do that. I think we have some others to reply to, but we don't have to throw all <laughs> I of think them. everybody has replied to <laughs> Then we're just stalking it. At one point, we're just stalking. It's like the no, main viewer running. live it's Twitter talking. stalking. Yeah. <laughs> Talk and stock. That's our new show. Talk and stock. Talk and stock. Ooh, that's our spinoff. <laughs> oh, you're right. Actually, uh, just below that. Well, no, let's keep stalking. Just below that, we've got our good friend Aaron Waltke. That's the one I was saying. Congrats, which is great. Uh, we know Ooh. Linda Butler, of course. She's yeah. wonderful. Uh, also, Super Nintendo Chalmers. Oh, we know He's, Joshua. So we know too. him. We know this guy. He's yeah. also in the Star Trek community. Okay. Uh, so very cool. Lots of people. Very, very good. I love the way the community, like that the, the people behind the shows are not acting like they're in competition with one another. They're all very supportive of each other, which is great. Oh. Kind of like one us. One Trek family. One Trek family. Yay. One Trek family. Uh, okay. So since we moved on to Strange New Worlds, that is going to be next in our uh, coverage. But before we do that, everybody, please make sure you have liked this video and you have subscribed. It's never too late to click that share button and tell all your buddies. Take notes. We're giving you tons of people to follow, like Flying Lobster. You got to love him. Flying uh, underscore lobster. Yeah. That's right. Thank you. Uh, Great also, with very it. interesting behind the scenes news, like he's a strike captain and he was actually training at like SAG AFRA people today on the line how to. He was just saying that today. A, yeah. a, a, like a picket line, just, just so that you know. How cool is that? That the actors are like, well, we're, we're not saying we're going to strike. Can we have some of the writer strike captains over for lunch so they can yeah. give us a few pointers? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's pretty bring, cool. Bring some blank uh, pieces yeah. of cardboard and wood yeah. <laughs> and cotton candy. No reason. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, huge names are pushing for it too. So. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. So Bob D says if Terry had picked the nominations, he should have picked worst shows so he could win. Oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> he still has a good shot. I mean, it's a great show. So yeah, he still has a good shot. A great show. Play. Really good shot. I don't know. I worry about the bias against sci-fi and Star well, Trek in general. What happens when like two people are nominated from one show in the same category? Does that split the voters and help? I have to not? assume that they would not cannibalize each other like that. That would be so unfair, I right? Know. Because that makes you a better show. It happens if you in have Lappies, probably. Nope. You're right. We can't stop it. Interesting yeah. connection. Aaron Walkie says, Bill Walkoff and I know each other from way back in our DreamWorks days. When I was working on Guillermo del Toro's Tales of Arcadia, and he was working on Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts. I love that oh, show, by the way. Wow. Great show. I love that. All the best people know each other. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, look. The uh, the end of the Enterprise poll, sorry, the Enterprisean poll. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I love it. The With question box. was, do you want an Enterprise movie or how much do you want? And of course, the winner was with 81%. Very, very much. There is no other mm -hmm. answer. The others were just yeah. lost. Yeah. Um, I the wrong button by accident. I mean, we have yeah. seen that, uh, what do you call it, the Nobulin walking around in the background in Strange New World. So maybe one day we'll get Dr. Flock back. Ooh, that'd be great. Optimism, Captain. I mean, with makeup, people don't have to look. I mean, they can go back to looking their previous age. Animated shows, they can do yeah. that. And also, John, well, John, also, Bungsley, John Bungsley has, has enough energy for it, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he has energy, and, it, yeah. and it is like technically set in the future, and so mm -hmm. we don't know like how Jenna Wheel is age. So, mm -hmm. I love Doctor Fox. So, yeah, strange new worlds. So, look, we also have an article here from uh, ScreenRant.com. Our good friend, John Orchiola, who Anne-Marie went on record saying was one of her two favorite writers ever. 
Uh, mine is probably uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, but maybe you mean like journalists. No, he's way down the list. Uh, <laughs> That's how he feels about you too. <laughs> Mutual. <laughs> uh, so this article is entitled Star Trek Strange New World star Melissa Navia breaks down Ortegas's season two arc. So, so this is great. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, go ahead. It's, it's a really amazing interview and it's a very long detailed um, interview and article. So I just wanted to kind of direct uh, like um, the part that's like, if you scroll down a while, mm-hmm. it starts with you have, it's under a picture of her and Spock at the helm and it says, you have such big moments in bold. And it's just kind of like, um, yeah, here. It's so good. I lo- this is such a great interview. Uh, Muhammad, would you like to read this part? Sure. You have such big moments in this episode. I think it's referring still to episode four. Is that right? Yeah. You have such big moments in this episode, but you know fans have been asking for the Ortega spotlight episode. Hashtag more Ortegas. Is this the spotlight episode for season two? Which I've heard people ask that question. Melissa Navia, this is the spotlight one. Do you know what? I almost think fans at the end of the season are going to be like, we did not get enough Ortegas. And the funny thing is that I put so much into what I do for the character and into the storylines that are for me. I spent five or six months giving my everything to this character. And every piece that you saw of Ortegas is in these episodes. We're going to see more of her backstory as a soldier, which I love because we definitely did not touch on enough of that in season one. There's so much more Ortegas in the season, but I'm like, you know what? I think fans are still going to be like, we want more, (laughs) which is a great thing to know that that's going to happen as an actor and that fans want more of the character that you are playing. You know, that's interesting that she says that she puts so much into her character. That almost seems like that's a hint that we just need to be paying a bit more attention. So even if she just has a couple lines here or she makes a face there, those aren't throwaway lines. That's not something that should be forgotten. Like if you want more Ortegas, watch more closely. So he, of course, our John Ortega goes into that next. Because it's just, it's one of those things that's sort of like that. There are no, not that it's a small role, but like if it's an episode with a small role, like no small roles, Mm. only small actors. Which obviously that, whatever, that's not, that's just like a thing. But oh my gosh, every time you see her even in the background, it's amazing. You're absolutely right. Right after that, they go into that, uh, Muhammad. So John says, you kill every scene you're in. You don't blend into the background. When Ortega is given something to do, you get everyone's attention, which is why everybody wants so much more of you. Well, Sanavia replies, Yes, that's thanks to the writers for sure. And then also, she's just a fantastic character. And she's a part of everything that happens on the Enterprise. John asks, for a year now, ever since I interviewed your castmates at Comic-Con, I've heard rumblings about the mysterious episode nine and how it's even crazier than the crossover. Is there anything you can tease about it? Melissa Navia, I'll say this. I'll say I'm going to be hanging out with my castmates soon. And I feel like everyone has been talking a lot about it. I have not been interviewed as much as I think everyone else has been interviewed, laughs. I'm like, if they had interviewed me across the board, I don't think anyone would have been talking about the episode nine, the one in question, because it's a surprise that's coming. And even once you kind of know about it, you still can't imagine what it's going to be until you actually see it. So I'll say this, the episodes that are coming, I am so honored to be a part of them as an actor, as a performer, as a storyteller, and as a member of Star Trek. They are going to be something you've never seen before. Wow. Whoa. I would also <laughs> like a short track spot for Strange New World where you just watch Ortega's hanging out in that new 10 forward bar. Oh, yeah. And like watch it, people watching. It so that much. would be <laughs> epic. so fun. Oh, I love her. That's watching. what it is. Episode nine is a Seinfeld episode. It's an episode uh, about nothing. That was, that's my just, dream. <laughs> they're just hanging out. They're just chilling you know they're you got uh let, let's say you've got, dinner with who? you have spock going around trying to tell the same joke to people to see how the proper way is to say it for people to laugh yeah. like he'll just be like to get to the other side and the person doesn't laugh so he goes to the next person to get to the other side and he's like i'll get this maybe that's a data thing 
Yeah. I like I like your comment though, Emery, because uh, I was thinking back to episode two there with when Ortegas was talking to the doctor and pointing out Spock yes. and the other Vulcan. I just that, need that so was, much of that. That was that so was hilarious. such a great interaction. And then Spock walking over, like, I'm sorry you had to witness that outburst. Oh, <laughs> and also, so good. Like, Something that happens in Star Trek that I love too, that it re- when they do those scenes, it reminds me of Enterprise because there were so many Enterprise scenes where they're just sitting in that like chef's galley watching yeah. who's what else is going on in the other on the other tables. And it's so interesting, like who's eating with who and what yeah. combinations are like meeting up for bulk and tea. I, just, oh, I love that kind of like daily life minutia. Mm-hmm. And Ortega is so good at it. A decent amount of that Voyager too, you know, in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, we cooked. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I, I mean, all of them, but yeah, I just, mm. I love that kind of thing. She just, she just really excels at making those things pop. Speaking of things that pop, everybody, uh, we we're talking about Spock, our good buddy. And wouldn't you know it, he's going to be featured in the next episode. <laughs> of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which is season two, episode five. This is an article from trekcentral.net, who's still pissed off at trekcentral.com for stealing their name. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, screw those guys. And then they're like, well, you could also have godaddy.com was like, would you like trekcentral.us? And they're like, get out of here, godaddy. We'll take net. (laughs) <laughs> uh so this is a preview of star trek strange new world season two episode five you know me i kind of just scroll through the pictures to pring. and my girl to Wait, pring so there's some back, important things finally. to be said first first of all it's co-written by Catherine lynn who you might recognize from lower decks fame she wrote wedge wow Dutch, which wedge dutch really wedge Dutch. three shows yeah. right that. love that yeah. episode so now she's coming over to Strange New World. So everybody's obviously like, this is a comedic episode. That's amazing. And then Henry Alonzo Myers, and then um, directed by Jordan Canning. And they list some of the other actors who are in this, but we can talk about the actors as they're shown in the pictures if you'd like. There's some interesting ones. Yeah, Gia Sandu. Uh, I think Which, that oh, in there, I, I always forget what the title of the episode okay. was called, but their Freaky I Friday just episode. Amok. Oh, yeah. Uh, Spock Amok. Amok. So I just watched she Amok Time. killed it. And she killed it looking like original to Pring. I couldn't even believe my eyes when I watched Amok Time. I was like, it literally, I could literally believe that was her. It, her and this, her acting blew me away. Yeah. But this picture is visually stunning. Look at that. The costumes. Oh, yeah. it's incredible and the earrings and and just oh my gosh both spock and to look stunning yeah. oh, oh it's oh, the apron show wow <laughs> the apron show wow i like the quote that's on the screen right there at this point i just like a cooking with pike short trek <laughs> Those tomatoes yeah. are great looking. <laughs> yeah. Melissa. What? <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. say tomato here. Tomatoes. And then there's, there's a nice tomatoes. clip to look at everybody. So uh, be sure to check that out on your own time. Where are the other but, wow, pictures? that looks beautiful. It what? is. One is really Where stunning. are the other pictures in this? The... I don't know, maybe lower. No. Next. Maybe they, they didn't load or something. There's a picture with Amanda Grayson, who has yeah. not been seen since yeah. uh right the there. Sweet Sorrow Part Two episode yeah. in 2019. Back in Discovery. Mm-hmm. I love her so yeah. much. Same. Same. She's so wonderful. Does she feel the same way about you? I don't she know. Anne Marie. She, she does. Just, <laughs> she just she's just so lovely she's such a great actress and she really like she really makes a meal of that role i love it Um, she loves amanda grayson even more back of the head that's what i was gonna read um did you catch pike and patel drinking chateau picard while they yes i did in episode four i I did did not not. Uh -uh. (laughs) i screenshotted it and like blew it up and was like what because i also didn't know how that was that was before Picard took over the chateau, and the chateau I thought had been like 
empty for a couple hundred years. Oh no, Robert has it. So he clearly right. inherited it from someone else. So it's just like in the 21st century, it was still getting over the hard times of World War II and not making wine. Yes. But, but yeah, somebody, I saw that label. Robert would be still dead, but there would be somebody else who was only taking yeah. care of the chateau like waiting Robert for Jean Luc to decide to come. His, yeah. yeah. And Robert okay. did started himself. That's right. He wasn't born yet in Strange New World. But yeah, I forgot to mention that. That's amazing. Great little Easter egg. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. Especially mm -hmm. with that prop, like they didn't film Picard in Toronto. They had to mm -hmm. get the prop from somewhere else. It's not like it was laying around the warehouse. Yeah, and it's cool because uh, Captain Picard was never even born yet when that when that yeah. model was so, being yeah. drunk. Yeah, I, was thinking, I had the timeline off in my head. Yeah, you guys are right. I was thinking for some reason was, was after this uh, oh. next generation. Obviously, it's before, yeah. But I couldn't, uh, at least on my resolution, I couldn't get it to like enhance enough to see the year or anything because I wanted more detail. Yeah. I'll need cool. your to post about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, there's still so much news to cover, everybody. This is crazy talk. Check it out. So uh, over here, Trek Central, the Trek Central uh, tweets out inside the lower decks handbook. Oh, yeah. More page preview pages from the upcoming Star Trek lower decks USS Cerritos crew handbook. Look so, at this. The, awesome. the Trek movie article kind of like covers, um, like enlarges it and highlights some things where it's a little bit more easy to read. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with the Gilbert and Sullivan after school hangs. Mr. Wolf, are you familiar with Gilbert and Sullivan? It's so No, funny. Captain, I have not had a chance to meet the new crew. No, composers, Wolf, they're composers. <laughs> Remember, what is that like? <laughs> real. That is, so is that hilarious. Nemesis or Insurrection? It's uh, one of those two. Yeah, it's one of those two. Nemesis no, Captain, I have not had oh. a chance to meet the new ensigns. <laughs> well, maybe it is Insurrection. <laughs> I think it's so insurrection. Funny. Yeah. So this is yeah. the uh that leads us into the trekmovie.com article that that uh Amory you're just mentioning. It's entitled First Look at the Star Trek Lower Decks Crew Handbook. May offer, May offer season, season four clues. Oh Sorry, that's the key. That's very exciting. So what are those clues? I don't see any. Um, but I think so we need let to me see where they start. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you go down to like underneath uh, the captain, yeah, underneath that Captain Freeman thing and start there, they start mentioning some little Easter egg. In addition to name dropping Admiral Picard in her intro, the call out boxes show a dialogue between Captain Freeman and Brad Boimler where she refers to him as Lieutenant Boimler. What the crap? Oh, what? Interesting. Interesting. Wow. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> when is last seen, <laughs> I, I feel like if if he does go up to uh, a lieutenant, they're going to Tom Paris him and put him back to Or Edson maybe this is actually there. They wrote it and they pretend that they wrote it and it's like fan fiction. Ah. Uh. When last seen in season three, Boimler was still an ensign, as were the others. Another preview spread about tricorders shows hilarious. Rutherford in what appears to be the rank pips for a lieutenant junior grade. Oh, yeah, right there. Uh, so it is possible that some of the lower deckers are getting promoted. Ooh. Meanwhile, Harry Kim is like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> I almost said something and I held back. <laughs> Tendi is featured in the above spread and another covering sick bay. And she still has the rank pips of an ensign. <laughs> the Simps the, the Simpsons, <laughs> the, the sick bay <laughs> spread also features a dialogue box from Talin. That's where I was thinking they were going with yeah. this. A new Vulcan character first introduced in season two, who was seen joining the crew of the Cerritos in the season three finale. Her dialogue indicates she may be assigned to sick bay. Mm -hmm. with you know, 
Yeah. Oh, look, there's peanut hamper. What a cutie. Put on some pants right here, peanut hamper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> springy, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's interesting. Good catch. Very good catch with the pips there. Super fun. That's something I would never, ever notice. So I need, I need people like checking me to bring it out for me. By the way, everybody, I should have mentioned, speaking of Ethan's pecs from uh, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, <laughs> he will be a guest on the seventh rule reviewing this next episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which comes out on Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And are when you, I say he will you, be a guest. Are you being serious? Yes. I've never joked a day in my life. I don't even have a sense of humor. It's happening, people. Red alert. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ethan, right now, Melissa's like, will he be in an apron? <laughs> 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 yes, that's the rule. <laughs> uh, we'll all be in aprons. One of two guests. We'll have two guests this Thursday for the Strange New Worlds review. We'll tell you who they are in just a couple minutes. But before we do that, let us finish these last couple quick articles here. Have to cover this. Trekmovie.com has an article here that says, See Cisco face Cardassian justice in preview of Star Trek number 10. This is the comic oh. book stuff. So that's a, that just that's it. I just want to show you that. Uh, the final prelude to the Day of Blood crossover event, which kicks off later this month. The series is written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, the leads behind IDW Star Trek Year 5 series with art by Mike Feehan, probably Feehan. Anyway, so check that out. Beautiful. Ooh, we know what that is. Ah. A dirty orb. A dirty orb. <laughs> oh, there's Worf. This is great. I mean, just seeing the pictures yeah. gets me happy. Yeah. People I miss. Data looks like Quark and Cisco and Shax. That's got that's gotta be Shax. Oh. Look at the scar. Look at the scar. Oh, that's yeah, gotta sure be enough. Shax. Ah. Crazy. Oh, I love it. Old so Shax, Data, Quark, and Captain Cisco are together in this. That's pretty badass. Um, That's very cool. Um, and lastly, I'm so pumped for all the, whatever news comes from this. Lastly, everybody, you'll have to check this one out on your own time. Trekmovie.com. Paramount Plus Comic-Con 2023 Star Trek panel to focus on Discovery, Lower Decks, and Strange New Worlds. Wait a minute. That's an over, a little over a week. I thought they weren't That's what I thought allowed to talk about it. Maybe. We don't know, but like, yeah. There's I guess no they can talk about it. old stuff, right? They can talk about things that have already The actors, if, if it happens, but they yeah. could bring on um, like directors or That's true. Whatever. That's true. That's a good point. So uh, Robert Kaiser in the live chat out in Austria, where it's 2.30 in the morning. Wait, 3.30 in the morning. Wow, Robert. He says, yes, Shax is in the comic series. Thank you for that confirmation. Um, do we know anything about this actor's strike yet? This impending possible potential actor strike and how it's going to affect comic-con i mean like is this news going to be old in two days and not correct well, or not accurate well i mean first of all the article does say like what's planned so that lets you at least know like what is coming up in the world of star trek but yeah um i think like cbr and a couple other news sites have covered what that means for uh san diego comic-con in particular which is that the actors would be asked not to be on panels where they talk about like actual shows that are currently going, but they're welcome to like be there and just talk about their career in general or like as tables. So I don't think it really may, I don't think it has any effect on creation. Obviously it would have an effect on like who can be at Hall H talking about 
their shows, but I don't know if they'd pull out or if they would just send like, you know, Alex Kurtzman or someone who's probably already going to be there. Good intel. Thanks, Dr. Emery. <laughs> Shout out to War Dog Heim in the live chat who says to Rose Kirby as she goes to bed in Derby at 2.30 in the morning, he says, have a lovely morning, Rose Kirby, because my jerk brain, when I first saw that, I thought he said, have a lonely morning. I was like, what? What a jerk. But it says lovely, not lonely. Right. So sorry for doubting you, War Dog. I'm... <laughs> All right. Let's talk about this week, everybody. Um... Trivia? Hmm? Trivia? Oh. Hell yeah. Thank you. I got a different kind of trivia question this week. So we talked a lot about things that were on Twitter, right? So if we, if we go through the little way back machine, it's not actually that far back, but go <laughs> back to uh, Discovery Season 3 being on the air. Uh, Discovery Season 3 was really exciting because we were finally introduced to Grudge the Cat. That was very exciting. David Ajala posted something on Twitter showing the two cats, not one cat, but the two different cats. And there's big main coons who play Grudge. Who their names should be Mary Kate and Ashley. Yeah, right. <laughs> Playing one role. Who responded to the tweet? And this is an actor or actress from Star Trek Discovery. Who responded to the tweet in shock that wait, there's two of them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember that, but I you don't remember who, remember who it was? what. No, ah. I don't even have an idea. I don't even. <laughs> My guess, I'm going to guess and say... Well, don't say it, don't say it, because you don't want to give it away. If it, it, just, just well, I don't know if it's true. Okay. I don't know, but hold your guess till the end, so, so it's not a hint for other people. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Oh, Chris Marshall says, Mary Cat and Ashley. <laughs> uh, this guy gets full house comedy. Uh, okay, so I this... One thing really fast that we forgot to mention for the San Diego Comic Con, which is very cool, is that on Friday there's actually a real live panel about the TAS 50th anniversary. And obviously, what? we need to mention that really? you are obsessed with TAS. Yes, it's going to be in the I animation like the domination section. That's like the most loved TAS has ever, ha ever had in like an official capacity, aside from its Emmy. Wow, 50th yeah. anniversary. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Yeah. Very cool. They were Enterprise before Enterprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so this week, everybody, check this out. Uh, yesterday on the Seventh Rule, we premiered our full episode review of the Next Generation episode Conspiracy, which was sponsored by our good friend, Mr. David Gregory. So special thanks to him for that. Our very special guest was the legendary Michael Westmore. The guy that basically turned every th concept and idea in Star Trek history into an actual freaking alien or an exploding head in this case. Uh, Conspiracy, that's the episode with the exploding head. Check it out. It's on the seventh rule right now. You can watch it in its entirety. Michael Westmore tells us all the stories of your favorite show. Get it? See how I changed that? Well done. Thank you. Um. Then tomorrow on uh, the Falling Tower YouTube channel, this is at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time, we have a very special show that was uh, suggested to us by Linda Andereg, uh, Johnny Quest. Uh, so check that out. We've got Jurassic Jen, Jennifer Durst, joining us for Johnny Quest. It's a fun one. Check that out. Tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Falling Tower YouTube channel. Uh, that's been requested for like years by I know. her, Wardogheim. Like, it's, the comments are always full of Johnny Quest. It is hard. Many years since your show's been now. out, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an old ass show. Oh my God, it, awesome. I have a that crush on every show, on that show. That show came out when the cage was shot or yeah. when the cage was done. That's how old it is. Then on Thursday, on the 7th Rule YouTube channel, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time, we will have our full review of Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 5, the episode that drops right then and there. Uh, let me confirm, we do have Ethan Peck joining us for mm -hmm. that review because he's highly featured in that episode. 
as well as, let's see if we can confirm this right now. Yes, we can. The director of the episode, Jordan Canning, is joining us, everybody. So that's going to be very exciting. She's an incredible director. Put on your Air Jordans and get ready for Jordan Canning. So Ethan Peck and Jordan Canning joining us for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. Then on Friday, come right back to this channel. Okay, wait. I just have to add that she did a lot of Shit's Creek also. So she's like, oh, very grow up. Anne Marie, watch your mouth. I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, Shit's Creek's a great show. Everybody knows. Mm -hmm. So come right back to this channel on Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time for Star Trek and chill. We're going to have a lot of special things happening that day. First and foremost, everybody get your wine, get your cheese, join us for a very special edition of Star Trek and chill on Bastille day. Uh, let's celebrate French things while it lasts. Just kidding, everybody. Uh, get, but get your wine and cheese. Come with us. We will be telling you about all about the schedule for Sunday, which is the Star Trek Las Vegas pre con con all day on Sunday. Yes, Anne Marie. We have one other thing to add for Friday when you're done with Stack. Chip chat, which what? is BioTrack Explains is oh, dropping a Thursday. video. Oh, I thought you said it Friday morning. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. I haven't been spoken. It's Thursday morning. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So there's a BioTrack Explains companion piece to go along with charade yeah so uh, make sure you watch the episode first because like spoilers through oh, i guess they're not spoilers that aren't already in the preview but spoilers nonetheless <laughs> that's awesome what time does it drop 10 o'clock eastern time seven o'clock pacific a.m a.m yeah but it's not it's not a live thing it's just a two-minute video yeah 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 video. cool yeah. all right yeah. so everybody I can't wait. you got your day you got your day scheduled out for you already thursday is gonna be a good mm -hmm. day for you Get <laughs> thank you dr emory uh okay then on so that's friday then of course on sunday we've got a full day of festivities for the star trek las vegas 2023 pre-con con presented by uh us virtual trek con as well as the seventh rule and the roddenberry network and shore leave podcast a bunch of others you're gonna have a blast just set your day aside on sunday have fun with us hang out on Friday, Star Trek and Chill, we will go over the entire schedule for you. You can go to virtualtrekcon.com for all the information you need. That is virtualtrekcon.com. Uh, thank you to Matt Boardman for putting that together. That's it. What's our answer, uh, Dr. Knorr? Actually, let me give one thing. You mentioned Shit's Creek earlier. For uh, This is a random aside, but anybody like that show... The most recent season of Black Mirror, if you watch the first episode of that, which is called Joan is Awful, it actually has the the, the main the main girl from Schitt's Creek in it. And there's a reference to the show Schitt's Creek in the show. So I'll just leave it that at that. that. <laughs> so that's just meta. Be yeah. I know. Ryan, did you want to guess first? I was just going to say Mary, Mary Wiseman. Was my guess? Uh, it's incorrect. The, actually, the person who got it right, <laughs> I love it. Uh, Linda Anderegg says, "No clue, but I'll guess Noah." <laughs> that was correct. <laughs> I was very close then. Adjacent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got very it. adjacent. So yeah, Noah was very one who said good. That, which was well, really funny Linda. because Noah had scenes with the cat. Parentheses s. <laughs> well, it's Linda's lucky day today. Yeah. All right. Uh, buy a lottery tacos. tickets. With cilantro. What? That's too with much cilantro. good stuff for one person. That's not with cilantro. <laughs> yum. Uh, okay. People are requesting so, you sing the Marseille as a Star Trek and Chill Friday. Sing it. We'll sing it with the, you. The French, the yeah, the French dance will be a surprise. We'll see. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> I think Muhammad and Melissa will do a duet. <laughs> Melissa will do it much better than me. The Toyas and Chill. <laughs> <laughs> We all will all have to wait a minute, Muhammad. You're not going to be there. You you're throwing us under the bus. No, sorry. Like, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we'll totally do it. <laughs> uh, we should all learn a foreign national anthem and sing it that day. Uh, we'll pick we'll pick a country out of a hat, and somebody will be like, "Who's Turks and Caicos or something like that?" You know, O'Brien. Anyway, O'Brien. Oh, uh. That's it. Melissa Longo, can you please 
tell everybody where they can find you online today. At Melissa Longo, M-A-L-I-S-S-A, Longo, on social media, theintrovertedrepublic.com, a walking art made by Melissa, you can find Muhammad shirt. Um, and uh, walking art made by Melissa on Patreon. And yeah, and all of these places. Excellent. Go do that. Uh, Dr. Nora, can you tell everybody where they can find you online and then again, where to find your new video? Sure. So uh, my socials are, are, are all Mofnor, M like Michael, A, F like Frank, N like November, O, O, R. Pretty much everything like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, LinkedIn. Spill. <laughs> Not skill. <laughs> But um, for the new video, if you're interested or just want to see any of the science explainer videos, if you go to YouTube and just type BioTreki, B-I-O-T-R-E-K-K-I-E, there'll be a new posting there on Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy whatever else there you might find, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, Dr. Amory, for the plug. I actually forgot about it until you said it. Me too. (laughs) Good save. Uh, Where can people find you online, Dr. Amory, except for besides Um, the live chat everywhere? uh twitter at amory siegel run you know we should do on uh star trek and chill this week we should have all of these uh social media companies that nobody's ever heard of and do polls that are like which one of these is not a real social media that's a really good one i love that yeah Yeah, but no cheating (laughs) Don't go do your homework now, everybody, you nerds. Uh, I know they're all going to study for the big test. Here's the other thing. I bought cheese for Star Trek and Chill, and I got brie, and I already ate half of it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go what, buy more cheese. Is your favorite brand Belky? Yeah, I was waiting well, for that I, joke. It is. I love brie <laughs> Belky. Uh, all right, everybody, you can find me online, unless it's to yell at me for my dumb jokes, at Twitter, that is going to be uh, at Ryan TG Husk. Again, that is at Ryan TG Husk or just Virtual Trek Con, the seventh rule and falling tower on your favorite social media, especially YouTube. And by the way, this is the second day in the row that I've seen a Megadeth Rust in Peace shirt being worn at the gym. Uh, It's my favorite album by Megadeth, by the way, it's the fourth one. And they both were on like 18 year old kids that didn't look metal at all uh, and didn't look like they never heard of this. Their both shirts were very brand new. Both shirts were black. Both shirts were the same two days in a row. Somebody tell me, is Target selling a Megadeth shirt right now? This is my prediction. I I can't imagine that's a coincidence because, you know, sometimes Target, like they'll have like a Nirvana shirt or a Mm -hmm. Motley Crue shirt. I have a feeling, or maybe a Walmart. I feel like there's a shirt, a store somewhere out there that is selling Megadeth Rust in Peace shirts, which is pretty freaking, I'll buy the shit out of that. Anyway, somebody let me know (laughs) if in the next few days you see that shirt there, uh, I'll totally go get it and I'll rip the sleeves off and make it metal. That's it. (laughs) Uh, Everybody, when you are looking for your favorite Megadeth shirt, put it on the main viewer.